I don't know how many of y'all remember, but in May of, I want to say May of 2003, I was sitting in Fort Carson, Colorado, in our barracks, our makeshift barracks. And, they, and on TV, on the big screen TV, they show where President Bush had flown in and landed on the U.S. Um, aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln. And it had a big old sign that said, mission accomplished. Now this is, for, this is when um, we were at war with Iraq. Okay. Now mind you, mind you though, that he said mission accomplished in May of 2003. I'm sitting at Fort Carson, Colorado, getting ready to go to war in May of 2003. But he said mission accomplished in 2003. And so I thought about that. And so in, in, in our minds, Deacon Hawk, we were like, what mission is he talking about? Because we were still on mission. Because we were preparing to go over to Iraq. So I, I don't understand what mission he was talking about, but he, his mission, what, what, whatever his vision was, was not lining up with the mission. And so I thought about that. And then I thought about, you know, Christ, you know, you know, when he said mission accomplished on the cross. Christ said mission accomplished when he said into thy hands I commit my spirit. In other words, Christ accomplished the mission right there on the cross. And so I thought about that. So that mission that he accomplished on the cross was also extended to you and I. I'm going somewhere with this, so follow me with this. God is good. All the time. Y'all are weak. <laughs> I'm trying one more time. Maybe, yeah. Deke, maybe he's only good all the time to you, huh? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, because I mean, you're the only one that I hear right now, you know, so. <laughs> God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. Amen, amen. He's good all the time, all the time. You know, you know, um, Brother Johnny, you know I was, I was watching the Chiefs game last night, right? And I was listening at the end when Mahomes said that the fans came and they were like packed. They packed the stadium. He said the, the stadium was packed. And he said that he appreciated the fans coming and cheering them on in the packed stadiums, yeah. Sister Hattie. What was the temperature at that time? Anybody know? What was the minus what? So the temp was negative four and dropping. But they was packed out. Coming to a game to cheer on some multi-millionaires yeah, yeah. that they won't get a dime of <laughs> and they, they ain't done nothing for them come on, come on, come on. but they came out in droves yeah. and Minister Monique said and they even paid yeah. to come out <laughs> to hang in the cold yeah. at four below and dropping yeah. and then they stayed to after the game yeah. Didn't he want to leave? 
to cheer on a group that ain't done nothing for them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all, y'all draw your own conclusion. Y'all draw your own conclusion on that one. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm gonna leave it right there for right now. I might. I might come back to it. I might come back to it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I thank God. You know, I just. I chuckle because you know we. You know we grew up. You know in in Wisconsin. We grew up. And it's fun to me because, you know, I, I ain't started my message yet, so I ain't started my clock yet, so y'all, be, y'all bear with me for a minute. You know, and so I remember, I remember when we were on Marquette and Albert, you know, and I, this is how I know I'm getting old because I got a whole bunch of stories to tell now. <laughs> I remember one winter, uh, Dennis, that we literally, when we walked to school, you know, and I, I know I sound like my mom and them now, but the snow drifts was like this, right? <laughs> You couldn't even see over the snow drifts. <laughs> you couldn't see the cars coming. And then after the snow drifted so high, then it got cold. And we still went to school. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, we're getting soft. We're getting soft. <laughs> but I'm going to come back to that in a little bit as well, too. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to Zoe, y'all, those of you who have braved the cold. It is beautiful outside, sun is shining. Amen. Uh, I do ask you to know, keep First Lady in prayer. She was not feeling well this morning, which is why she's not here. And usually when she's not feeling well, she's not feeling well. Amen. Now me, on the other hand, you know, I'm, you know, I get a sniffle, I'm ready to just close the door and, you know, amen. But... Um, so y'all, y'all keep her in prayer as she um, uh, is uh, just not feeling well at on today. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to the book of 3 John. 3 John is in the New Testament. It's two books away from Revelation. It's a small, small book. It's about maybe 14 verses. Okay? There's no chapter, just 14 verses. When you have it, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, and then we'll get started in our, ser- in our message on this day. Amen. Third John. When you have it, stand to your feet. Say amen, stand to your feet if you're able to. Amen. Okay. It reads, The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Verse I'm I'm going to keep reading. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, speaking against us with malicious words, that's what the word prating means, and not content with that he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish, who wish to, putting them out of the church. I'm going to stop right there. May Lord bless readers and hearers and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. I'm going to continue our conversation about back to the basics, rethinking our mission. Rethinking our mission. Now, I pulled up our mission statement for Zoe, and Zoe's mission statement is to recognize and reach the unchurched and unbelievers, to restore them to the right relationship to the power and person of Jesus Christ that they might realize relevant worship. 
That's our mission statement. And that, in other words, that's why we, Zoe, exist individually as a church. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to talk about not just the mission of Zoe, but understanding and rethinking the mission of the church. And I use this passage for a reason. I don't know how many of y'all remember, but in May of, I want to say May of 2003, I was sitting in Fort Carson, Colorado, in our barracks, our makeshift barracks. And, they, and on TV, on the big screen TV, they show where President Bush had flown in and landed on the U.S. Um, aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln. And they had a big old sign that said, mission accomplished. Now this is, for, this is when um, we were at war with Iraq. Now, mind you, remind you, though, that he said mission accomplished in May of 2003. I'm sitting at Fort Carson, Colorado, getting ready to go to war in May of 2003. But he said mission accomplished in 2003. And so I thought about that. And so in, in, in our minds, Deacon Hawk, we were like, what mission is he talking about? Because we were still on mission. Yeah. Because we were preparing to go over to Iraq. Yeah. So I, I don't understand what mission he was talking about, but he, his mission, what, what, whatever his vision was, was not lining up with yeah. the mission. Yeah. And so I thought about that. And then I thought about, you know, Christ, you know, you know when he said mission accomplished on the cross. Christ said mission accomplished when he said into thy hands I commit my spirit. Yeah. In other words, Christ accomplished the mission right there on the cross. And so I thought about that. So that mission that he accomplished on the cross was also extended to you and I. I'm going somewhere with this, so follow me with this. Okay. Even though he accomplished the ultimate mission, it is now our mission to be able to share that mission uh -huh. with those who know not Christ. And so when I looked at this passage of scripture, I was looking here in, in the book of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and in 3rd John, it was interesting because in 3rd John, he is literally uh, addressing some issues that are still going on in the church. This is John. This is John the Apostle. And John the Apostle, he's, he's, he's dealing with this, but I want you to see here, I want to see something here, because in 3rd thir third John, in these little 14 verses, he mentions the word truth seven times. He mentions the word truth, walk in truth, walk in truth, testify the truth, seven times. In 2 John, in about 13 verses, he mentions the word truth six times. Interesting. In 1 John, you know, he mentions the word truth about maybe five or six times, you know, in more chapter. But, but I, I was, I was it, it, it caught my attention <clears throat> in 3 John because he kept going back to talking about the truth. Uh -huh. see, I, see, the mission of the church is our ability to be able to spread the truth. If you, if you know nothing else, the church, as a matter of fact, Paul says this. He says in the book of 1 Timothy, the third chapter, the 15th verse, he says, understand something. that I want, Timothy, I want you to know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, the church of the living God. Listen to this now. The pillar of and ground of the truth. Yes, yes. So in other words, what God did is God housed the truth in the church. Yes. And he housed the truth in the church because the church was the only entity that could get the truth outside into a world that know not God. Yes. Because the church is kept by the Holy Spirit of truth. Yes. And so therefore, because the Holy Spirit of truth is in the church, the, 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 the ground and the, um, and the pillar of the truth because the church is holding this very valuable piece that God has to go forth because the church is holding it. It's the church responsibility to deal with the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
Uh, verse 9, because really what, 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 what Paul, does, I mean, I'm sorry, what John does here is in the first few verses, he talked to Gaius and he, and, he, and he commends Gaius because Gaius is walking in the truth. You know, and he says, hey, you know, hey, I, I pray that you that you prosper in all things, be in health, just as your soul prosper, because really your soul is prospering, Gaius, because you are walking in the truth. Amen. See, our soul will only prosper when we walk in the truth. I know you think you may be prospering without the truth. You think you may be prospering without God, but you are, there, are, there is no prosperity without the word of God in your life. Amen. Amen. You may get some stuff, some physical stuff, and, and that may be okay, but understand the physical stuff remains here when it's time for you to go. God views prosperity not in the material, but God views prosperity in your relationship in accordance with him. We view prosperity in materialism. We view prosperity in how many friends we got. We view prosperity in how, you know, in how great our job is. We view prosperity in how smart we are. We view prosperity in how many dollars we have in the bank. We view prosperity in a, in a very way, in a very exact opposite way that God views prosperity. He says, I want your soul to prosper. And so understanding, he tells um, Diotrephes, because Diotrephes was one, was, he was one who, who gossiped maliciously. And he also was one who just lived in lies. He refused to receive John's words. Diotrephes was one, he wanted to take over the church. But he wanted to take over the church because he was a fraud. He wanted to take over the church so the church could do what he said do and not what the said the Lord do. That's why John is saying in here he, talk, he mentions the truth seven times in 14 verses. Because John knows that at the end of the day, the lies, the gossip, and all that can be dealt with and beat down and overcome by the truth. I think, I think we need to know that even in today's time. Because this, because this country is, I mean, it, 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 is, it is just infiltrated with nothing but lies. And the thing is, we have now begun to believe the lie over the truth. As a matter of fact, we think that the, that the truth has a color and the lie has a color. Or the truth has a political party and the lie has a political party. Neither is, the, neither is true. The truth is the truth and the lie is the lie. And we need to understand that right now America is on its way to hell because America lives in the lie. And there's only one entity that can deal with that, and that's the church. Because the church is that entity that is the pillar and ground of the truth. And so I wanted to talk about rethinking our mission as a church. Because the church's mission is to make sure the truth gets out. Amen. Oh, I, 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 th thank you, Deke, for that one amen. I appreciate that. <laughs> because we need to understand that, and this is where I get in trouble a whole lot, because wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever table I sit at, whomever I'm with, I, I measure what we do by the word, by the truth, and not by what they say, Amen. and who they are, Amen. and what they have or what they can do for me, or what they can give to me. Yes. It's got to be measured by the truth. Yes. If God is going to be glorified. Yes. Because it goes back to, he's saying, I, I, Gaius, I pray that you prosper, that, and that your soul prospers, but the only way your soul is going to prosper is if you understand the truth of God. Yes. So, how do we rethink this mission? How do we get back to really dealing with and understanding the truth? <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that question because I got a few points here and I'm going to keep going. I, I'm going to try to get up out of here as well today um, and get this whole message through here. So y'all, 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 y'all bear with me, bear with me. OK, so in order for us to understand the, the mission of the church, the mission of the church really is about getting the truth back out there so that our soul can be, you know, revived and our soul can be saved and continue to be saved so that our soul can be captured. Understand this, that the first thing we must understand is that if we're going to get back on mission, we must talk about the truth. Amen. We must talk about the truth. In other words, 
We, as we talk about the truth, that's what we call, because the truth will, is what we call the proclamation to the soul. In other words, the truth, when we talk about the truth, we're proclaiming to the soul, you know, what thus saith the Lord. See, when you, in other words, we're preaching. Now, that's all. To talk about truth means you're going to preach. Preach. In other words, we got to preach. I'm not talking about the license to preach. I'm talking about when you are in the marketplaces or when you are at work, when you share the word of God, guess what that's doing, y'all? That's preaching. We got to talk about the truth, not somebody else's truth. He says, here, no, t- no, no, beloved, Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you prosper. Verse 3 says, for I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. How did he know that? Because John literally talked of and proclaimed the truth to his soul. In other words, John took the time to talk about the truth of God. And John made the truth preeminent. In other words, John prioritized the truth in the life of Brother Gaius. Diotrephes, he, he rejected the truth that John spoke of, but, but Gaius, re- he, he received the truth. And John said, because you have received the proclamation of the truth now to your soul, now your soul can prosper because of the proclamation of the truth to your soul. You now have, a, you have the ability to begin to be able to move forward because now you have something in your hand that you begin to work with called the word of God, the truth of God. Y'all, I don't care how much education you get. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how how politically powerful you become. If you have not the truth of God at work in your life, you will not prosper according to what God has called you to prosper. But the mission of the church is to talk about the truth. In other words, proclamation to the soul. Preach to the soul. Because preaching simply is, I was, I, I was listening to someone and they said, that, see, all preaching is, is the introduction of the word of God to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> because, see, the, to preach means I'm just going to proclaim. I'm going to give you what I call a 30,000 foot view. So that proclamation of the soul, that proclamation, that, that preaching simply means that I'm going to kind of, kind of, you know, um, gloss over. I want to I wanna get you, I want to get you enticed. For what's to come. And so, and so what, what, what John did is John, he, he enticed Gaius for what to come, for what was to come in the word of God. He got, he, got him, he got him desiring more of the word. He had him delighting in hearing more of the word. <laughs> and when he did that, then the, the, the next thing is, as we talk about, you know, rethinking the mission, in other words, talking about the truth, pro, you know, the proclamation to the soul, the next thing we need to understand is this, that you must then teach the truth. Yeah. See, the teaching of the truth is what I call the preparation for the soul. Right. See, you prepare the soul by teaching the soul because teaching becomes deliberate. It becomes what we call a deeper dive. OK, well, what happened? Because John, it, you know, you, you have to understand what John is doing here. As John has written first and second and third John, John is literally right now discipling Gaius. He is discipling others in the church. So he just didn't preach to them. He hung out for a little while. He began to teach them. And you have to understand, the teaching is a little bit different than preaching. You know, I used to get I used to get upset a little bit. Dick Hawk, they say, "Well, you're a good teacher, you're not, you, know, you know, because and and, and they were right, they're right." But I realized that Jesus was a master teacher; yeah. he wasn't a master preacher. Yeah. Now he now he now he said, "I'm going to preach," but he also taught. Yeah. And so, all teaching is is the ability for you now to instruct to the point where you can implement what you understand. Yeah. And so, when I preach to you, I just get you excited about the word. But when I began to teach you, I'm trying to get you deeper into the word. Because when you go deeper into the word, other things happen. See, you just get excited about preaching. But once you began to get taught, now as you get taught, it goes deeper. So in other words, when I look at the whole thing about teaching, I say that teaching is this. Y'all can write this down. When I think about teaching the truth of God, in other words, when I think about prepar- no, prepar- no, preparing the soul, what I think about is I think about we, we must, we, we inform through instruction and then implementation. To teach someone means that I'm going to inform you through instruction, but also implementation. In other words, I'm going to implement what I instruct you. 
And, and as I instruct you, because as I instruct you in the word of God and inform you, then you understand it better. You are able to now walk in it. Yes. You are able now to implement the truth. Yes. You can't implement what you don't know. And so what John did is John, he took time to teach. He took time to then instruct. But then it also means to educate through explanation and exemplification. When I say I'm going to teach you, I'm going to explain. I'm going to educate you, but I'm going to educate you through explaining to you, but then exemplifying to you what I explain to you. Because I'm not a good teacher if I can't implement what I teach. And so when I say, when, I, when, you, when you hear about this whole term about teaching, understand to teach the truth, it simply means I am going to prepare your soul to be able to receive the truth, but not just receive it, but be able to, to, to dissect it. And not only to dissect it, but to be able to digest it. And as you digest it, now you become stronger in the very truth that you need to know. Amen. See what I'm doing right now? I'm just teaching. I'm not just, pre- I'm, I'm trying to te- I'm trying to help you understand how you digest the very thing that you need to make it in this life. Yes, yes. And so the mission, one of the missions of the church is not just to talk about the truth. It, it, it is not only just to teach the truth. In other words, it's not just for me to inform you of it and then educate you with it. Because once you are informed and then you are educated, then the next thing is you begin to testify of the truth. See, you can't testify of that which you know not. But once you understand the truth, because you've been taught it and, and we've talked about it, you can now testify. Look, look what he said. He says, he says, for I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. That's even better. In other words, they came and testified to John about the truth that was in Gaius. Oh, you missed that right there. See, it's one thing for you to testify about the truth of God. But it's a whole nother thing for somebody else to come on and talk about. Do you know, I, I, you know I, I, Brother Greg is, su- is, is such a yeah. powerful man of God. Yeah. Deacon Hawk, powerful man of God. Sister Hattie, powerful woman of God. It's, it's something else when somebody else testifies yeah. about the truth that is in you. Yeah. It ain't nothing for you to talk about how, how, yeah. how you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. What's that? I don't care what they mean. Hey, you, hey, how, how, no, how you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm highly blessed and favored. Are you? Can somebody else look at your life and say you are highly blessed and favored? Can somebody else look at your life and say you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost? Because what John, what John says is Gaius, they're testifying of the truth that is in you. They are testifying of the truth yeah. that is in you. Yeah. They are testifying yeah. of the truth. Yeah. 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 I was, you know, I'm sure y'all, y'all, y'all see this all the time. They talk about the GOAT, the greatest of all time, basketball players. You know, I, I, like, I, like, Michael, I like Michael Jordan. You know why I like Michael Jordan? Because, because Jordan let other folks talk about him being the greatest of all time. And whenever, they, whenever Jordan, whenever they asked Jordan a question, so they had, it would be like, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, deal with that. I don't, you know, get in that discussion because, you know, I, I, be, I believe that, you know, it's ter- I mean, he gives explanations, but he never once says and gives an explanation why he's the GOAT. Yeah. But other people talk about him being the GOAT. All right. Why do other people talk about him being the GOAT? What, is, what, 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 what are they doing? They're testifying of his greatness. And why are they testifying of his greatness, though? Why? Because they witnessed his greatness. They witnessed what he was doing. It was the witness, and because of their witness, and they're going to stand on what they saw. See, y'all, we need to understand that that's how we have to be, because the goat is the truth. The greatest of all time is the truth. 
at some point in time, <clears throat> we've got to be able to walk in that way where people begin to testify yeah. of what they see. Yeah. And that's, that's what Jesus was talking yeah. about when he says, you will be witnesses yeah. of me, not do witnessing for me. He yeah. says, you will be my witnesses. You don't have to, uh, not one word, as my mama would say, not nary a word have to come out your mouth about how good Jesus is when they see your life and they see how you're living and they see how you're responding to adversity. They see how you're responding to um, to poverty. They see how you're responding to riches. They see how you're responding to all these things. And then look at your life and all they can say is, there goes the man of God. Hallelujah. But the mission of the church uh-huh. is to put us in a place, deep heart, where we can testify of the truth. In other words, where we are practicing the truth from the soul. Because if, if it's in here, we're going to practice it. If we practice it, people are going to see it. If they see it, they're going to testify of it. Yeah. And you don't have to say one word. You know what he said here? Amen. Testify of the truth. I'm almost done, y'all. Amen. But when I looked at this passage, and look at this, this little old epistle and, and, and the lessons that John was teaching, you know, because he's talking about the truth. So in other words, so we, we understand that the mission that the church that I see that John is trying to teach us through the life of Gaius and even Diotrephes is that we must talk about the truth. We must testify of the truth. I'm sorry, we must teach the truth and then testify of the truth. But then, y'all, as we testify of the truth, we must also tarry in the truth. Well, he said that. I'm glad you asked that question. He says, because he says here, of the truth that is in you, verse 3, just as you walk in the truth. Just as you walk in the truth. You do know that walking is, is an action, right? And, you know, and so, and you walk, you know, and walk, you know, um, uh, depends upon, you know, um, motor skills and, and, and you have to learn those motor skills. Those motor skills have to get innate in you to the point where you do it without even knowing it. Well, what I like about here is that when you walk in the truth, because I, I was looking at something here where in order for me to walk in the truth, that means I've got to lit, I've literally got to tarry. In other words, y'all know what I mean to, to tarry? You know what I mean? it's, it's to hang out in. To be able to hang out in it and to be steadfast in there and not go nowhere. And, and so I, I was looking at this because many times we don't understand that we must learn how to tarry in the truth. We must learn how to hang out in the truth. See, you hang out in the truth by studying the word of God. You hang out in the truth by reading the word of God. You hang out in the truth by meditating on the word of God. You hang out in the truth, you know, by, by just living and praying the word of God. You hang out in the truth. In other words, at, you know, it, you should get to a point to, to where you say, you know what? What does the word say about this? Before I do X or Y, what does the word say? What does the Bible say? Because to tarry in the truth, in other words, it, it allows the truth to permeate the soul. All right. See, tarry means that it permeates the soul. Y'all mean to permeate, right? It means to get in and get into all the, the you know, the, 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 cra- the cra- cracks and crevices and, and all the little nukes, and, you know, uh, and, and, and it means to get in you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I hear, hear this, hear this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, real quickly, you know, once again, just I, when I, I, used to, I was in Korea for a year, and have y'all, anybody y'all heard of the kimchi? Y'all ever heard of kimchi, what kimchi is? Okay, kimchi, y'all, for those who don't know, kimchi is this, uh, <coughs> is this, um, this food uh, in Korean. And, and, and it, man, kimchi is probably one of some of the, it stank. It just, it, it don't stink, y'all, it stank. <laughs> but kimchi is so powerful that if you eat enough of it, you literally, when you begin to sweat, you can smell the odor come out of you. I'm telling you. And so it got to a point where when we used to run, <laughs> we used to run PT, <laughs> all those who ate kimchi got in, the back of the, uh, got in the back of the formation. Because those of us who didn't eat kimchi, it, it, when, we, when we ran and began to sweat, we could smell the kimchi and it, 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 just, it just caused us to like, you know, cringe and, you know, and mess us up. And so finally we told the first time, look, whoever eat kimchi top, they got to get in the back of the formation. Because we don't want to be smelling them as we're trying to run our, you know, information because it messes you up. It, it, it messes up your focus. You missed that right there. See, it messes up your focus because they, they smell of kimchi. So what happened is the kimchi permeated them. The, they ate the kimchi. They digested it. 
And when they ran, they sweated out. And then the odor from the kimchi what, that permeated them, the kimchi, and then it messed with our nostrils. Yeah. See, you got to get to the point where the word you carry so much in the word of God, where it permeates your soul that whenever you walk, whenever you, whenever, you don't have to say a word, but whenever you walk around, it permeates. And people just smell the word of God on you. And now you reek of the word of God. You have to say nothing about the word of God. Simply put, all you got to do is just walk and they're going to know that you're there. That's what happens when you tarry in the word. And so he told John, he told Gay, you know, because, you know, and I'm looking at this because Gay is tarried in the word. Because he walked in the word. He walked in truth. I'm almost done. You know, Psalm 1, you know, y'all hear me you know, quote Psalm 1, 1 all the time, you know. Bless the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, but nor stand away the sinner, nor see the seed of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his delight he meditates on. In, his, in the word, he meditates on day and night. He tarries in the word of God. Y'all, we, we need to be able to tarry in the truth so that it permeates our soul. And when it permeates our soul, Many times, it will, for those who don't, know the, who don't know the word, it may cause them to lose a little focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that might be a good thing, because then you can help them regain the right focus. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Last thing, last thing. Let's, let's, go to verse, let's, go, let's go to verse 12. I told you I'm going to be done. Let's go to verse 12. Because verse 12 says something here. He says, Demetrius, now this is another one. So, you know, this, 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 this is how John is. See, John begins with a commendation with Gaius. He then chastises um, Diotrephes. But then he comes back and he has one more commendation for Demetrius. You know, and, and that, that, that's, that, that's a good pastor right there. That's a good pastor. He, he knows how, know how to give commendation. He also knows how to, you know, challenge, you know, and give discipline. But he ain't going to leave it just like that. He's going to make sure that he leaves you with a word of commendation. I like that. Because he says, and Demetrius has a good testimony from, from, listen, man, y'all, man. See, I, see, I get, Brother Johnny, I get excited when I read the word of God. I really, I get excited because y'all just don't see what it's saying. Look what he said. He says, Demetrius has a good testimony from who? From all. Amen. But look what he says then. And from the truth. Y'all yeah. missed that right there. See, it's okay to have, it's, it's okay to have commendation from all people. But when the truth can commend, oh, you missed that right there. When the truth can commend you. See, now you're talking about something. In other words, we must triumph with the truth. That's my last point. You must triumph with the truth because the truth promotes your soul. You must triumph with the truth. Demetrius was able to triumph with the truth because he, says, I got it. he had a good testimony from all and look at it, from the truth itself. Now, I got to come and see if I can really wrap this in. He says from the truth itself, right? In John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by, their, by thy truth, because thy truth is what? Anybody know what that? Sanctify them by thy truth, because thy, thy truth is what? Come on, Bible study, Bible, no, Bible readers. Okay, let me get back over there. In John, in John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them, Lord, by thy truth, for thy truth, for, I'm sorry, for thy word, your word is truth. You see that right there? He said, now follow me, now follow me. Y'all got to follow me. He says, sanctify them by your word because your word is truth. Here, John says, Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. Jesus says, sanctify them by your word for your word is truth. But then if you go back into John 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, right? All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Y'all see that, right? But then look at what it says in verse 14. It says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only, as, only, as only the begotten Son of God. So the word was made flesh that was, that was in creation, 
And Jesus said that the word is truth. So the word, which is truth, Uh because the truth is the word. You're still missing this thing. John says, you, Demetrius, had a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. The truth is the word. The word is Christ. Oh, you missed that right there. So in other words, he says, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, John. It doesn't matter that you have, that you have testimony from all the other folks. But when the truth can testify of you, because, see, the word is truth. Jesus is the word. He says, for by him all things were created, and he is before all things, and him all things consist. This is Jesus. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness dwell, because it pleased God. But he says, for in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead. By we talking about the word, the truth, talking about Jesus. But then at the end of the day, listen to this and I'm done. He says, he says in Colossians, he says, look at this. He says, he has wiped out the handwriting of requirements against you. In other words, he's taken all the sin away from me. And all you have to do is come to him. He says, he's nailed it to the cross. But he didn't stop there. He says, then he says, he's disarmed principalities and powers. And he made a show of them open. In other words, he embarrassed them. He, he went to fight on your behalf on the cross. He is the truth, which is the word, which destroyed all principalities and powers on your behalf that you might be able to walk in the newness of life that he has given you. That's the truth. And you can triumph in the truth. Because he is the truth. Because he does say what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Y'all, we need to understand that all we have to do as a church All we got to do as a church is begin to talk about the triumph of the truth in our lives, which promotes our soul on earth, but then also when we get to eternity. John gives, to me, John gives us a great example here in 3 John. Uh He simply says this, and I'm done. Matter of fact, will you come on up? I'm done. And that is this. The church's mission, y'all, is to talk about the truth, yeah. which is a proclamation of the, to the soul. Uh-huh. It is also to teach the truth, which is the preparation of the soul. Yeah. It is to testify of the truth, which is the permeation of the soul. Uh-huh. It is to then tarry in the truth, which is we call the practice of the soul. I'm sorry, the parent, permeation of the soul. And it is, a, it is then to triumph in the truth, which is the promotion of the soul. Yeah. Only the church, only the church can help you deal with the soul, with your soul. Only the church. Nothing outside the church. Father, we thank you on this day for helping us to rethink the mission. Help us to know, God, that at, at any given time, when falsehood, when fraud, when lies, when darkness comes our way, We have the very weapon that you've given us to bring light back into this world, into our lives, into our soul. And that is the truth, your truth. And help us know that, yes, we have the truth in writing, but we also have the truth in Jesus. Help us to understand when we say Emmanuel, that it simply means that you have deliberately decided to descend and to daily dwell intentionally and intimately involving and in being involved in our lives. That's the truth. All Emmanuel is is the truth coming in. and overtaking our lives and now yielding to it. Help us know that the church truly is the ground and the pillar of the truth. And help us to be able to walk in that 
and rethinking our mission, which is to spread the truth. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen.